Hi, I'm John Ambrose. Welcome to our L2 Lateral Line Training Facility, where we'd like to present to you an updated version of the L2 Lateral Line Training System. Keep in mind as you watch this video that although this is the simplest way to putt a golf ball, it may not be the easiest at first. The L2 putter and the lateral line system will not work for you. You must work for the system. By simplifying the putting motion, you will be relinquishing control to the L2 putter and instead become its guide rather than its manipulator. The simplicity and repeatability of a mechanized pendulum stroke is without question the best way to putt a golf ball. So sit back and enjoy watching this revolutionary USGA conforming way to putt and see why wanting different results will mean trying something different. I refer to the L2 pendulum as the inventor of the lateral line stroke because I simply copied all of its attributes. By building a machine that would do the best job of stroking the L2 putter, I was able to simplify the motion and thereby make it into a style that can be humanly possible to copy. When looking at the conventional stroke, you can see that in order to make a machine with the capability of duplicating this style means adding bends, angles, and joints. Having this predetermined motion in place and then trying to build a machine to copy it means limiting design options. These limiting options simply cannot be duplicated by us, so the resulting machine mechanics necessary to reproduce a conventional stroke that has the pendulum characteristics are not transferable back to the human motion. The L2 pendulum machine was designed to be the best way to take advantage of the L2 putter's characteristics with the only restriction in design being to conform to USGA rules. What the L2 pendulum machine gives us is simple movement that we can copy thanks to the face forward stance and a longer putter. The perfect motion of the L2 pendulum is repeatable and dependable. It doesn't second guess distance or direction. If properly oiled, the motion is smooth time after time and never gets the yips. Although we may not be able to putt like a machine, we should at least try to emulate one when it comes to mechanics. Judgment, touch, and feel may be necessary human qualities for green reading and energy input, but it is in the mechanics and the unaffected repeatability that the machine outshines us. In order to incorporate these machine-like characteristics into our stroke, we developed the L2 pendulum to give us a motion that we could actually duplicate. The concept is simple. We read the green, aim the L2 pendulum down the aim line, decide how much energy to transfer into the ball in order to move it to the cup, and then apply this energy with backstroke size, releasing it and allowing gravity to generate the energy and allow the physics of the motion to do the rest. The combination of the L2 putter and the L2 pendulum machine has led to what I believe to be the best way to putt a ball, which I call the lateral line system. Stability and smoothness of motion are requirements the pendulum machine must meet just like they would be in your stroke. If the pendulum machine was unstable or the swivel point not secure, the smoothness of motion and tempo would become distorted, producing an inconsistency in both distance and direction. Whether you're using a pendulum machine, a lateral line stroke, or any other method, in order to initiate the action, some outside force will be required. Muscle power and some joint movement is needed to bring a putter to the desired backstroke size in order to initiate the motion. However, if this muscle energy is only used for taking the club away from the ball, its effects on the forward action could be reduced. This does not mean that there is a possibility for error. If the backstroke movement is not done with the correct tempo in mind or the correct amount of backstroke size, 
then distance can be distorted. Upon reaching the top of the backstroke, gravity and momentum do the rest by transferring the desired energy to the ball as a club seeks an equilibrium or neutral point while maintaining a constant tempo as it does. This neutral point is the point at which the motion started at address. This is why we do not hold the follow-through with a gravity-fed pendulum motion. To do so would mean we are forcing the club through the ball and adding to the momentum in anticipation of stopping the club at the finish. If the shaft of this putter were at a 90 degree lie angle, gravity would also aid in maintaining direction for the stroke. But because of the 80 degree lie angle that is required by the USGA, there needs to be a swinging support bar placed on the pendulum that extends out to the shaft in order to maintain the lie angle and keep the putter head square over the ground throughout the stroke as it freely moves with the motion of the gravity swing. The little fork that supports the shaft is what allows us to have a perfect pendulum motion even though the shaft is not vertical or 90 degrees. This support keeps the head over the aim line and the face square throughout the stroke. The lie angle support and single swivel point are the two most important parts of the L2 pendulum and the lateral line stroke. The tempo of a pendulum is based on the length of its swinging arm or radius. As this pertains to golf, we would say that the longer the club, the slower the tempo as it is moved by gravity from a fixed point. Minus any outside influences such as wind, wobble, or human input, the pendulum tempo will be the same no matter how big or small the stroke size. But what is also interesting is this tempo will also be the same no matter how heavy or light the object attached to the end of it may be. To better explain this, if we were to take a tennis ball tied to a 20-foot rope and secured the other end to a fixed point, the ball, when pulled back to any distance and released, will travel at a tempo of, say, 50 beats per minute. If we now took a 20-foot cable and connected a 10-ton wrecking ball to it and pulled it back to any distance and released it, it too will travel at a constant 50 beats per minute. But if we were to place a wall in the way of both objects, the tennis ball would bounce off while the wrecking ball would go through it. While they travel at the same tempo, their momentum is significantly different. The tempo of a L2 pendulum with a 48-inch putter attached to it swings at 58 beats per minute. Even though a lighter conventional putter of the same length would swing at the same tempo, the heavier L2 head, unlike the lighter head, will be capable of displacing a golf ball a longer distance without the need to add any energy. The heavier the head, the greater the momentum. A lightweight 48-inch putter with a backstroke size of 1 foot may move a ball 10 feet. A heavy-headed putter with the same backstroke size may move a ball 20 feet using the same tempo. So in order to compensate for lack of momentum that comes with the lighter putter, some outside force of energy will be required to make up the difference. This means muscle and joint power. This need for muscle energy gets even bigger when the distance required increases and the backstroke size becomes limited. As you can see on the pendulum machine, the anchor swivel point is a main part of the stroke. The anchor swivel point stabilizes the motion as well as supports the putter. As applied to our motion, you can see how the anchor arm supports to the chest while the swivel hand is out to the outside and lifts and swivels the putter. The stability of this swivel point cannot be overstated. Without the swivel point being stable and secure and supplying the lifting power for the putter, the whole pendulum motion will be distorted. Not only does the anchor swivel point supply lift and support for the stroke, but the fingers on the front of the anchor swivel point can supply backstroke pressure to help the putter start its backstroke motion. The thumb on the stroking hand supports the lie angle similar to the angle support on the fork used in the pendulum. The need to maintain this support is what keeps the putter square over the ground on the backstroke and follow through. It's important to remember that the stroking hand is just a guide holding the lie angle support and helping to initiate the backstroke. 
You need to pay attention that the stroking hand does not become a manipulator or controller of the stroke. While setting up the pendulum machine for our videos, I discovered something that was pretty revolutionary. We set up the pendulum machine, lined it up, got the distance for a 30-foot putt, and pulled back the putter, made the putt. Ball went in the hole. Pulled another putt back, putted another ball, it went in the hole. The third ball missed and so did the fourth. I couldn't understand why two balls would go in the hole and two balls would completely miss. And they don't miss by a little, they miss by like three inches. So what I did was I got my spin balancer, spin balanced the two balls that missed, and put them through the pace again. Both balls went in the hole. It's a pretty revolutionary thing that you would never know unless you had a pendulum machine to do it. How many times would you miss a putt and blame the ball? Most of us would blame ourselves or a bad read or whatever, but we'd never blame the ball. But when you have a perfect machine putt in it, it should go in the hole. So if it doesn't, something else is happening. Of course, there's imperfections in the green that could cause you to miss a putt, even if it's done perfectly. Taking that into consideration, uh, unbalanced ball will cause a, a miss that you would never have known about without the pendulum machine. How the spin balance machine works, you take a ball and you set it in the machine, push the button and hold it in. What you're gonna see is there's a green light right here that's flashing. When the green light goes to steady green, like it is now, it's reached its maximum speed and it's balanced. Put the pen in, make your line, and you're done. What we've just done is we found the center point of the ball, the balance point of the ball. You're gonna take this line and use it when you do your putting. What we're gonna do now is run through the whole sequence of how to use the putter uh, in a practical application. When you get on the green, you're gonna take your ball marker, set it down behind the ball. What we're gonna do now is use the ball marker for our reference instead of the ball. Uh, you're gonna take the putter, line it up, pick your aim line based on the track and the distance and the true line, which is the line between the ball marker and the cup. Line your putter up. It's a good idea to tilt it back a little bit because when you do this, you're gonna see the entire face to help keep you square. If you keep the putter upright like this while you try to line up, there's a tendency to point it left of the hole. You're gonna reach in, get your ball out, take your uh, balance line and parallel it with the alignment marks on your, on your putter head here. Pick up your ball marker, carefully take the putter, work it up behind the ball. Now this is complete. This should not move anymore. This is your entire reference point is that putter head. Step up next to it, using your right hand to hold the putter as you walk up. The reason why you do this is, if you're holding this putter with your right hand, you'll tend to keep your right shoulder square. If you hold it with your left hand as you walk up, you tend to turn towards the ball, and what you're gonna get is your right shoulder pointing right of the line. So you wanna make sure your shoulder's up the line. It's much better if you just use your stroking arm to balance the putter as you walk up. You're gonna be about a club head and a quarter away from the club. Toes, hips, shoulders, everything square, using the putter head again as the reference. Once you feel comfortable, shoulders square, reach over, anchor your forearm to your chest. Left hand is your lifting and swivel point. Your fingers are on the front. This will help start the backstroke when it's time to do the motion. Your thumb of your right hand is going to support the lie angle. Right hand holds a lie angle, left hand does a swivel and lifting. You can use it as a guide. Now you're gonna visualize the head going square back and square forward in your mind. Once you've got everything in place and you're ready to fire, look up the hole. Now this is really important. When you look at the hole, you're only looking for distance, not for direction. Don't aim at a point. Don't aim at the edge of the cup or a dark mark on, dark mark on the green. You're only looking for distance. Measure uphill, downhill, fast green, slow green. Those are the things going through your head. Not direction, direction's done. Once you've got your distance figured out, you're gonna transfer that to the feel you need for the size of the backstroke. 
Once you've transferred that to the feel of the backstroke, all you have to do now is just visualize the stroke, feel the backstroke size, it's back and through, and you've made your putt. Binocular vision is wonderful for long distance putting, but it can get you in trouble when you do short putts. And the reason why is because most putts break, even short putts. So if you pick a line that's going to give it a little bit of break and you start looking at the cup, you're going to subconsciously push it toward the hole even though you should be following the break. It takes a great deal of discipline to make sure that the putt goes square back and square forward even though the hole may be left or right of the line. A good way to do this is remember your ritual, pick your aim line based on the track line and the true line to the cup. Line your ball up just like you always do. You don't want to miss it because the ball's off balance. You've got everything lined up. Now, instead of stepping up here next to the putter like we usually do for longer putts, you're going to stay about one foot size behind the putter. You're going to let the putter lean towards you a little bit. Now, instead of using the pencil grip that we've been using for most of our other putting, we're going to use an underhand grip. We're leaning the putter back. If you'll notice, the bottom of the putter has a quite a tilt to it so you can lean it back and what you're going to be doing by doing this is changing the loft of the face straight up it's about a two degree uh, lie angle when you lay it back it turns about four degrees which helps the ball start rolling quicker now you're just going to make a punching action to make your putt another short putting method involves moving the stroking hand closer to the pivot hand this decrease in length provides an increase in swing weight feel and decreases the ability of the stroking hand to influence the motion. This need for less backstroke size also can allow for a closer foot position to the club. A variable stroking hand position can be applied as distance decreases or on fast screen. If you can keep in mind what Ben Hogan said many years ago, that golf and putting are two completely different sports. One game is played in the air, and the other is played on the ground, then you'll have a better understanding of the philosophies and conscious effort needed to apply to the putting motion. And remember, if you want different results, try something different.